Hi, welcome to a special edition of the TU Sports Extra podcast. I am joined again by my good friend Kelly Hines, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Frank Haith. Uh, news came over the weekend that he has resigned after eight seasons with the Hurricane. Kelly, you covered all eight seasons of the Frank Haith era. What was your reaction to the news? Definitely felt like it was coming. You know, I, I thought it was just um, a matter of when it would be. I thought, you know, well, are they going to wait until Monday? They, you know, oftentimes wait until, um, you know, get through a weekend um, before announcing things like that. So um, I, I, it definitely wasn't a surprise. Um, I, it was definitely something that I think most of us who are familiar with the program, you know, had sensed and, and were expecting. But really, to me, it was just a matter of, of when exactly it was going to happen. So um, you know, I was uh, covering um, some basketball games in, in uh, Norman and uh, when when it pops in. And, and I, I honestly had expected at that, that, that point that it would wait until Monday. But um, for whatever reason, that was the timing of it. So um, not a surprise. Um, I, I, I don't think um, it was something that that people involved uh, were caught off guard by. Was it? Was it a good decision, you think? Is, is it fair to say the program needs kind of a new direction? Is that, is that fair? Um, I, I felt like if, if you're an, an administrator at, at TU, um, I think it, it was going to be tough to um, give Frank another year on his contract, you know, after a season like this one. You know, they'd given him the, the extension after the previous year, which – you know, I felt like that could have gone um, either way at that point. So I definitely feel, didn't feel like, um, you know, that was going to happen after a year like this. So um, in terms of, you know, the big picture, I, I felt like, you know, there wasn't really enough there to make you feel good about where the program was. You know, if, if you're talking about, um, you know, postseason appearances or, you know, um, standing in, in the American Athletic Conference or, you know, attendance and talent level and all of those things that you're maybe like looking at, you know, in, in terms of the big picture, I, I felt like it was going to be difficult to say, we like what we're seeing and we're going to give another extension to this coach. So, um, you know, I think it probably came down to, do we have um, enough money to buy him out of, of the, you know, remaining year on the contract? Or um, do we feel like we're in a good enough position to, um, you know, uh, work out a deal with him? You know, those things. I felt like it was maybe more, you know, the, the logistics of it, um, how feasible that was going to be. Um, it's hard to say if it's a good or bad decision because you don't know what the future would have looked like with him, you know. But after eight years, you kind of know what you have, you know. And I think there wasn't enough there to feel really good about the situation. Kelly, I really liked your tweet um, from the weekend where you said that when you changed beats, um, Frank reached out to you and just sort of checking in. I don't know how many Division I head coaches do that kind of thing. And it just I wondered if you might kind of react to that a little bit and kind of what made you tweet that in the first place. You know, it's hard when you, you've you known someone um, and covered someone for, for as long as I have with Frank. You know, I, I think um, – you know, eight years of covering the same coach, it's pretty unusual. You know, there's usually typically, you know, there's typically more movement on our end and, and on the coaching end. So um, I was very fortunate to cover a coach for that long and same with, with Philip Montgomery, seven seasons. Um, and so just getting to know um, Frank during that time, he just, um, you know, I, I felt like he, he had a personality that maybe a lot of people didn't get to see. You know, when, when, once you talk to him, you sit down with him one-on-one. -on -one, He's very engaging, very caring, um, doesn't just talk about himself. Like he wants to know about you and, and you know, it, it's more conversational, um, probably the most conversational, um, you know, sorts of interviews that I had with any coach I've ever covered um, just because he's, he's got a good personality. And so, you know, you get to know someone over that length of time, you know, it, it took me a couple of years to, um, you know, I think earn his trust and earn his respect and, and, you know, after that point, I felt like we had a really good relationship for the most part. There are going to be like bumps in the road, you know, always. But, um, you know, I felt like, uh, you know, for him to, you know, just um, be concerned about me and, and just care, you know, about, you know, 
Um, obviously he had his own stuff going on this season. It wasn't, wasn't the best season. And for him to reach out to me, you know, that, that meant a lot to me, but that, that to me was, that's who he is. And that's, you know, um, I understand it's, it's a business of wins and losses and that's ultimately what matters. You can be a great person, but if you lose games, um, that doesn't matter. But, um, I really felt like, um, he was, he's, he was the type of coach who, always represented to you well you know there'd be um you know moments in games when um you know things weird things would happen and he would I would give him the opportunity to say something about oh well you know he easily could have said something derogatory about the opponent or about another player or another coach he never he always took the high road he always did that and you know that's the stuff that you know I'll remember about him, like always, you know, the fact that he, he cared enough to check on me, but he also was just very professional when he needed to be and carried himself well, represented the university well. And I, I felt like, um, you know, those are the things that, you know, maybe you're, you're not going to be able to keep your job, but, you know, I don't think many people could say bad things about who he is as a person. And, you know, ultimately, isn't that what all of us want is to be, you know, viewed well for, for who we are as people, you know, and, and, you know, you can be viewed a certain way for, for how you do your job and maybe it's not good enough, but um, I felt like, you know, those other things um, that's, you know, what's important at the end of the day, you know? So um, I think his players respected him. Um, things don't always go smoothly um, when you're dealing with, you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds, but um, I felt like they, for the most part, enjoyed playing for him. So um, I just like who he is as a person, and um, I, I guess it's kind of why I felt like tweeting about that because, you know, there are so many people celebrating the fact that he, you know, lost his job, and, and you know, it's a tough profession, and, um, you know, I wouldn't wish anybody to have to, you know, figure out their next move right now, so, you know, ultimately, he is another human being, and I guess I try to see the, the, the human emotion side of things. Yeah, fair point. Uh, let's talk about attendance for a second. So attendance is not a TU problem. It is a college basketball <laughs> problem. Um, you know, we all saw that they had an issue with attendance this season. It got, it got really bad at some games. But in this day and age, Kelly, what's, what's realistic? What, like if you're TU and you, you want an attendance of what, what will you live with? Obviously, it's too low now. You're not going to get back to the heyday. Very few are. What's, what's a good goal? I feel like the arena needs to be at least half full or half empty, however you want to see that. Um, I, I think you need to have fans who are more engaged. You need to have a full student section. You got to figure out some way to get those kids in there. Um, and I don't think it's fair to compare to you to ORU after what ORU, you know, or you had to get to the Sweet 16 to um, get people to, you know, especially their students to get really excited about going to games. Like it, that makes a huge difference having a, a season like that, but, or you also found ways to, you know, get people interested who, who ordinarily wouldn't be. And um, that's not a complete comparison. I know it's, it's not the same, but the atmosphere at ORU games this year was electric. Um, the student section was full. Um, and that kind of, to me, showed the difference of, you know, a program that, that is clearly, um, headed the right direction in a program that needed some work. So I, I feel like, um, you know, at TU, the most staggering thing to me, aside from, you know, the student section often being completely empty, which is crazy, um, was, you know, the seats closest to the court were unoccupied. So that tells you that even people who spent a lot of money on tickets to have those seats just didn't even want to show up for them. I mean, that's pretty bad. So, um, and some of those seats weren't, um, the tickets weren't sold, but a lot of them, I know they were. I mean, I knew people who had season tickets directly behind press row. And I don't think they went to see a single game, which I guess if you have a disposable income, you could probably do that. But um, you're not even finding anybody who wants those, those seats. I mean, that's just, that to me was just, really alarming. So um, I feel like having people who are willing to, you know, show up for the games, um, if they have tickets, like you've got to get those people on board, like having those seats that are just going to go empty and you can't do anything about it. I know it's been an issue with football too. 
Um, and, and it's not always about the money. You know, the tickets are not that expensive to you. Um, but if people have tickets and they don't want to go, like that's, that's a problem. Like they would rather just like lose the money than be there. Like that's, that's not a good situation. So, um, I definitely feel like the, um, you know, in-game stuff could be dramatically better. Um, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus or anything. I just felt like the the value as a whole when you're factoring in you know the t the basketball team might not win there's not enough there otherwise to get you interested you know I feel like um some places just do a good job to make it entertaining you know like if you go to a drillers game um I would say half the people who go there they don't even realize who wins or who loses they just enjoy the product you know the whole experience you know I feel like you have to find a way to make it enjoyable, even if the team does not win. And that is a challenge. Like, I don't have any big ideas to, of how to fix that, but, um, you know, I, at some places, you know, the, the arena is not a good setup or, oh, hello, George. Um, or there's something about it that um, isn't appealing. You know, TU has a great arena. Um, it's pretty much perfect. Um, the, the parking is a problem. They've got to figure that out, but you can't say that the facilities aren't nice enough or good enough or whatever. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good setup there. So, um, you know, obviously if there's, uh, you know, renewed excitement around the program, um, depending on who they hire and players they bring in, that um, often generates a lot of that. Um, but I just feel like you're going to have to have a lot of things line up for you to get the people back who left several years ago. Once people leave, it is so hard to get them back because they don't feel like they're missing out on anything. Nobody's talking about, oh, did you see the TU game? And like, no, one's, no one is doing that right now. And so they don't feel like they're missing out on anything. So, you know, I know the pandemic didn't help things um, because, you know, during that one season there, there weren't fans loud in the building. And then people get used to not having to spend that money or having to, you know, make that commitment. And then, you know, it's pretty easy for them to not go back to it. So I feel like there are a lot of factors involved that led to the bad attendance, but it had definitely been on the decline for like, you know, more than a decade now. And it's, it's just really difficult to get back on track. You have to have, you know, just a, a crazy, wild, fun season. But I also feel like um, TU has not had the type of players who fans have really been able to connect with in a long time. And, you know, the... The, um, you know, James Woodard, Shaq Harrison, um, senior class, you know, I felt like fans really connected with those guys yeah. and um, rooted for them as players in addition to rooting for the team. And you need to have some of that, you know, recruiting more in-state players, that helps. Um, and just having some stability and continuity in your program to where you're not expecting fans to get really excited about guys who will come here for one year and leave. And then another guy comes in for one year and leaves. There was just too much of a revolving door with Frank's teams. Um, and that I know is a problem everywhere. That's not a TU problem, but um, at a school like TU, when you're, you're already facing so many other issues, when you don't have any um, players who fans really get to know um, that just adds to it. It's, Kelly, it, it's really affecting my personal enjoyment of college basketball, what you just mentioned, just the fact that rosters don't stay together and you don't you don't get an opportunity. I'm not talking about Tulsa, I'm talking about everybody. Yeah. You don't get an opportunity to get to know these kids. And even on a superficial level, you don't, you know, you can't even rely on, oh, when I saw them last year, the year before, it's it's a problem. And I don't, it, it, I mean, you know, I barely watched the bracket show yesterday. I couldn't tell you, much, I mean, you follow college basketball much more closely than I do, but I remember, you know, I'm, I'm sounding old now, but when I, when I grew up, even superstars stayed at least three years. I mean, it's, I miss it. I miss having a cohesive team where I could get to know the players, you know, I really miss that. And, you know, it's somewhat the same with coaches, you know, coaches become more and more removed from things, you know, it's not always that way, but you just don't, you don't really have coaches who feel comfortable, like, you know, having a great big personality or do, you know, wearing the sort of outfits that Nolan Richardson wore. Like, you don't, you just don't right. see stuff that like makes you like really excited about coaches in the same way that it used to be because, you know, they, they don't want to be too, 
to, you know, flamboyant to where, you know, officials hate them or to where people are very much like, you know, soured on them for whatever reason. I just feel like, you know, coaches are becoming more and more dry characters because they feel like they have to be. And, uh, you know, you don't see the same fiery types that maybe you used to. And those are the ones that fans often like love that, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, I love that he's standing up for his players and, and arguing calls, like the things that like fans probably would, would get more interested in, you know, you just don't see as much anymore. And um, the game itself has, has changed a lot. And, you know, there's just not as much personality and fun around it. You know, it's just not as enjoyable and I'm getting old too, because I feel that way, but um, you know, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just a different era. And I think um, it's so easy now for, for players to, um, you know, leave and not have any real connection. You know, I, I, there's a particular player who was on the TU roster this year who, you know, I asked at media day, you know, what do you think about Tulsa as a city? You know, is your first year here? Or like you, you've transferred from somewhere else. And he's like, um, yeah, I'm just here to play basketball. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Got it. Got it. Totally fine. You do you, but you know, this is actually a pretty great place to live. There are a lot of really good people here. It just, you know, sometimes they're just, they're not interested in that. And that's, there's not anything wrong with that, but you want fans to get excited about those players when you know that's how they feel. They don't have any connection to the community. Um, it's definitely seems to be different with football. I feel like most football teams do more, um, you know, community type events and are, are just more, even though they play with helmets on, they just seem to be more visible. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but there are also more of them. So that probably makes a difference. Um, I just, uh, I felt like with, with the TU teams in the last few years, you know, not as much personality as some of the ones in the past and just not any, any players um, that people really felt a connection to with the exception of Anthony Pritchard, who obviously is a Tulsa product, but you know, he's only a freshman and it, it takes time, you know, to get to know somebody. So I'm just hoping that whatever happens, he uh, is able to stay it to you because I think he has such a bright future ahead of him. So I'm going to put you in Rick Dixon's shoes for a minute. Uh, and we won't speculate on names because who uh, who knows? I mean, who even Frank, knows? Hayes wasn't, Frank Hayes wasn't talked about when he got the TU job until it's eight years ago. So it's probably going to be someone that we're not talking about. But just in terms of the type of coach you're you're wanting, you know, if you're Rick Dixon, what 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 are you looking for? I really loved the Angie Nell Pyre with with TU women's basketball because she was someone who had an excellent reputation um, as a high level assistant in college basketball had had worked under really incredible coaches. So she had that pedigree and you felt like she she knew how a program should be run. And she obviously, you know, being from Oklahoma, that helps, but having an, a connection to Oklahoma, understanding the high schools here and just, you know, really what the community is like, you know, that to me is, is a dream type hire. Obviously it worked out pretty well for her. You, you never know how things are going to go, but obviously her first season was very successful. Um, I feel like a younger, very energetic, enthusiastic um, coach who maybe doesn't have division one experience as a head coach, but has a lot of years of being a successful assistant, understands, um, you know, what is involved with recruiting high level players, um, has a connection to Oklahoma. I think I said that already. Um, and, uh, is able to um, compile a really good staff, you know, has the connections and has people basically lined up in their mind to, you know, this is who I want to bring in because I really feel like whoever it is, they need to have that, um, that staff that just comes in and just gets it done. You know, I really liked Frank's first staff. I mean, that first staff was incredible. All of the experience and all of the, like the, the, faces that you're like, oh my gosh, that he got, okay. You know, it was just like a really impressive first staff. I felt like it, it kind of went downhill from there. I know it's very difficult to retain assistance, especially if you have success, they're going to be moving on. Um, but I never felt like after the first couple of years that Frank had the type of um, assistants who um, 
were recruiting well enough on a consistent basis and helping enough to develop players. I'm not trying to like bag on those guys. I just felt like the, the staff was never as complete as it probably needed to be um, for, for TU to have, have the kind of success that it needed for them to keep their jobs, you know? Um, so I feel like uh, being able to, um, you know, compile a good staff and just being able to, you know, deal with all of the things that you're going to be up against. The academic um, standards, I'm not saying those are bad, but that's just something that you have to deal with that to you. And just being able to generate some excitement that has not been there. I think that that will come to some extent with any new coach because people are going to be willing to give someone a chance because they, you know, they're new. Anything new is, is you know, going to have some excitement that comes along with it. But I really feel like someone who is, is you know, on the rise and has some connections to this area, that that's going to be the way to go. All right, Kelly, appreciate the insight as always, and we'll talk soon. All right, sounds good. All right.